Hi, I'm Caio from Atelier RPG and today we're gonna paint the biggest, the meanest orcs in Warhammer Underworld, Morgox Crushes. Oh poor Iron School boys, outmatched by their bigger and cooler cousins, even their faces are suspiciously similar, huh? Well, forget about them, let's paint some swole orcs! I decided on following their original palette, yellow armor and all, so this is a good moment to practice your patience and perseverance. Yellow is a famously transparent color and very hard to make solid. And after just 5 thin layers, the armor finally looks like a ripe banana. I washed over it with thin down Rikon flash shade, scared of muddying the yellow too much since it was such a pain to get to where it was. And when that was all done, I noticed some metallic parts were painted yellow, so much paint and time wasted. Anyway, since the paint was out, I went over the weapons and the metal details too. I used a black wash over the metal to create deeper shadows and to raise contrast. Here I diluted some red ink with water and used it to add interest to the yellow armor. That meaning I created some color variation with it. I applied it with a brush, wiped it off on a paper towel, and then I dabbed off the excess. I then dry brush the original metallic paint, so it will become the mid-tone for the metallics. Now we dry brush a light silver on the most extreme parts, the edges and such. I dry brush very lightly and sparingly, I don't want their weapons to look shiny and brand new. Here's an easy trick to make your metallics more interesting. Ink. Blue ink in this case. The armor and weapons will receive a layer of it. The contrast from the cold blue tone will clash beautifully with the yellow armor and the green skin. And to finish the metallics, I'll dry brush the lighter silver again and that will really make the blue pop. Now I'll define the main tone for the base. Red contrasts really well with green, so it's the obvious choice. And speaking of green, 
let's start on the Arc skin. I mixed dark green with forest green for the base tone, and I layered all of the exposed skin with two thin coats. Now, with just the pure forest green, I'll make the mid-tone for the skin. This will be the most prominent tone, and it will push the darker tone to the shadow. Here, I tried a blending technique for the skin. That basically means I diluted and mixed paints straight on the model. It's not exactly easy, and it takes time, but I think it was worth it. I use this technique on all the larger areas of skin. And the final product is a very smooth transition, and the tone gradation really enhances the muscle's volumes. For the skin highlight, I mixed ivory with the forest green, and this will be applied on all the highest points of the skin, especially on the muscles. And once more, I'll blend in the highlight. As always, be careful not to overdo your highlights. It should be very localized, as to not steal the spotlight from the mid-tone. I'll use dark blue as a base for the cloth. And right after, I'm gonna use some medium blue for the mid-tone of the cloth. finish the cloth, a light blue for the highlights. I mixed dark brown and deep red for their pants, and I applied it with two thin coats. I painted all of their wrappings white, both the ones on the weapons and the ones on the forearms and calves. Now I'll blend in a lighter reddish brown, trying to make the color transition as smooth as possible. And right after that, I mix a little ivory to the prior tone and, just like in the skin, I blend the highlight in. I use the same technique for all the arc pants. The weapons wrappings got an ochre wash to speed up the shadow and highlight process. These parts are not focal points of the minis so there's no problem in using shortcuts for them. All other wrappings get a black wash. This includes the arms, the calves, and the one on Morgok's back. Morgok's trophy heads will be painted white and quickly washed later. Since the paint's already out, let's base coat all the bone parts, both on the bases and on the models.
At first, I tested a yellowish ochre for the stone bases. No real planning or anything. I used ochre on their teeth and then ivory over it. At this point, I thought a red wash would bring the whole base together, but I ended up not liking it. Maybe a dry brush will do it? Yep, nope. Um, the opposite maybe? Yellowish sand and red stone perhaps? I did a yellow dry brush on all of the sandy parts of all three bases. There we go, much better. Here's a trick of mine to highlight red without it looking too reflexive. Make the highlight with pure white, wait for it to dry, then make a wash with red and wash over it. The finishing details were great to highlight the center of the black wrappings, painting the eyes red, then yellow, and painting their nails black and highlighting them with white. And with the base rims painted black, Morgox Crushers are ready to crush the other warbands. And here's the final result. Man, I love that game, but maybe it's about time I go back to the RPG part on Atelier RPG, you know? Well, next time we'll create an encounter monster from scratch, including a mini, for an RPG. Subscribe not to miss any videos, leave a like if you liked, and friends, as always, good games.